back to the Chicago Tomahawk. I'm Mike and I got my line name Matt with me. Today, we're going to go over the Blackhawks' last three games uh, and we're going to go over some NHL news. So, Matt, what do you got, man? Well, yeah, like you said, we got three games to cover. We'll start off with the first one against the Sabres. It was the second meeting of the year for them, the Hawks and the Sabres. Uh, Connor, Connor Murphy opened up the scoring for the Blackhawks. He had a really nice goal. Uh, great pass by, I believe it was Kershev. But uh, Marazic also had a great first period. He made some really big saves. And, uh, you know, Buffalo ended up getting two goals on us. Uh, one in the last seconds of the first period. Those I are the worst those. goals of giving us. Oh, yeah, those man, are the bro. worst. Uh, and you know what, man? I I noticed that Jones and McCabe, that they were out there for two of the goals, and they like sometimes I just feel like they're watching too much. I don't know if you see that, but they're not really playing defense. They're more worried about getting out of the zone, playing offense. Yeah. So that's one thing I noticed with those guys. I I, I don't feel know like they you, look, they but... look confused sometimes. You know, like I I thought that it was like they weren't quite sure about assignments, but. I, I, I kind of just see them kind of looking around like, like oh, I thought, I thought you were covering that, you know, type of I, thing. I just see, like, they, they should have more active, like, sticks and stuff and get a body on them and right. take away. Like, that was just an easy tap and goal that should have been stopped, that, that second goal with seven seconds left. Right. It should could have easily been stopped by, you know, McCabe, and then it gets through, right through Jones, and this guy is just kind of sitting there like, wow, I can't believe it made it to my stick. <laughs> open nutter, but you know, I I give credit to the Hawks. They they kept fighting, and um, it was tight. Yeah, it was tight. But then they got a bad break in the second period. Uh, it was a power play actually, and I think Kane hit it up to um, Domi at, at the point, and uh, he lost control of it. And that Peyton Cribs, who they they got through the Eichel trade from Vegas, had a very nice, smooth looking uh, breakaway goal against Marazzi. Yeah. So that put him up three. Three to one, but um, I again, Kershev. I thought he had a really good night. He was he didn't he had a lot of chances. He every time I feel like he was on the ice, he looked he looked like Reichel a couple weeks ago. He was a threat. Yeah, he ended up opening up the scoring in the third, so it was three two, and um, then uh, the dying minutes of the game, Coach Richardson pulls uh, Marazic, and uh, the Hawks are working it in the zone and. Get the puck up to Seth Jones, and he buried a a wicked wrister through Craig Anderson, my former uh, goalie coach back in the day, and um, tie the game went to OT. Sure enough, the puck finds Seth Jones again, and he buries it for the game winner. And that's a game the Hawks absolutely stole. I didn't see that. I didn't see him coming away with a win on that one. That's for sure. Yeah, I, I you know it seems Seth Jones a lot of times when he shoots his. His shots are usually wide or they don't make it to the net, you know, and it's been something that's frustrated me, you know, all season, you know, that he'll wind up and like it hits nothing. And it seems like, um, you know, maybe he's working on that because he seems to be taking less slap shots from, from the, from the blue line and he's shooting wristers trying to get them through, through some traffic. Yeah, and you waste a second, you know, when you try to tee up the big rocket, you yeah. know, and that, that you don't see the, the wrist shot that much anymore. And it was a nice shot. It looked like it was tipped, but it wasn't. I, I think they were saying that uh, Tyler Johnson uh, tipped it, but he didn't. And I give Tyler Johnson some credit, too. He His little his little body was in front of uh, <laughs> Anderson, and he maybe caused a screen. If anything, he probably couldn't see it and get a good... Uh, get a good shot at saving it but uh big game that was a an absolute steal because i think the last time they met didn't it go the other way yeah weren't the the hawks were up and the sabers ended up coming back and i i remember being on twitter after that game i was so frustrated and uh the buffalo sabers media was kind of going after me and stuff i'm like <laughs> you guys aren't that great either relax yeah, you know they're like, oh you guys suck i'm like okay See you, see you in a couple of years when we win a cup before you guys. So, <laughs> exactly. Did you notice Henry Yokiharu at all? I noticed him on one play. I think he he got the puck to the net, and I uh, didn't they. I think they did get a goal off of it. I think it might have been Alex Tuck. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, 
I think it was that goal. I didn't, you know, nothing flashy, you know. I think probably uh, a trade that was kind of a change of scenery trade back in the day. Yeah. But we ended up getting Lafferty out of it, who jump into the next game. He had a fantastic game against the Blues. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. No, we got Lafferty from uh, from Pittsburgh. Y- yes, I know, but we gave Nylander to, you know what, it, it worked out in the end, I'm saying, because we we traded Yoki Haru for Nylander, and we didn't like Nylander. Right, we got, right. You know, it was like a, you know, the, the double trade type of thing. It led right. to Lafferty, so a good thing okay. did come out of okay. that trade. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Sure. And, Jump into the St. Louis game, Lafferty, man, he is man, just a shorthanded like force out there. Yeah, he, he had another one. Yeah, I like him. So that and that that the next game will go over. I mean, the Blues this was a must win for them. I don't know what the hell is going on with that team. Darren Pang, you know, he he's their color guy. He's in between the benches and stuff. He I still think he's entertaining. He's a he's a good dude, good Panger. hockey guy. Yeah, I like Pang. <laughs> I do too. I didn't I don't really see much of him in his playing career. I just know he was like four eleven. It seems yeah. like, and it's like, how can you be a good goalie at that? At that in the NHL, at least. Sure. And I guess he, for the Hawks. he he played for the Hawks, and Eddie Belfour stole his net, and that was it. You never heard Panger again, yeah. except for you know being his analyst. And I think he's a damn good analyst. Yeah, he's, he's, he's pretty fair. I think that he's good. Yeah, I like him, but he was going on and on like, "Hey, this is a must win for us. We we got to win." This is a you know a very bad Blackhawks team. They're you know they're trying to find their way. They're rebuilding, and we got to get a win. And man, I, they didn't they didn't look interested in playing the Hawks at all because I think the first uh, the first period it was three nothing Hawks. I think uh, Reese Johnson got a goal. Lafferty got that shorty. Um, Lafferty actually hit. Uh, I think it was Dickinson. It was like a two on one just cross ice pass. Bennington didn't even move for the puck. I was like, shoot, it's going to be one of these games. So, yeah. And we had a, our, you know, our so- recently signed goalie a couple months ago to be a, a backup, uh, Stauber. Or am I saying it right? Yeah. He, uh, he had a very solid game, too. He had 29 saves. It was his first win. I, I was looking at the impressive. number. I was like, who is this? <laughs> very impressive. And uh, they actually showed his mom uh, out in the stands. He, she got to see his first win. And, that's pretty cool, man. I mean, this guy's, yeah. I think he's in his 30s. So it's, it's a long road for for this guy. You know, a yeah. lot of these goalies, they start in their, you know, mid-20s, early 20s, if that. And kind of good story for him. But uh, Bennington did not look good. They they pulled him after uh, 4-1. Uh, Anthony Siu scored a goal. Actually, a nice snipe over the blocker. And uh, they put in Thomas Grice, who I thought was really good. The Hawks could, you know, they couldn't get anything by him. And the Blues actually clawed their way back. It was four three. Nick Letty with a with a goal from the point, his first of the year. <laughs> it's always a, the the, the X Hawks killing us, you know. I know, man. But um, you know, Max Domi ended up getting that fifth goal, burying the Blues. And uh, man, they're just having a rough season. I, what do you do, man? If you're the Blues, Are they what do you tear do? it down? I, I mean, I've we've we've talked about it on the last podcast. Uh, you know, we got Ryan O'Reilly's name out there. Yeah. We got Tarasenko. Maybe it's time, you know. Yeah. They're, I mean, Tarasenko's they're not, not anything. young. Neither is O'Reilly. Somebody could pay for Tarasenko. Yeah. I, somebody might overpay for him. He's a good player. He's got injuries, but, you know, he's, these guys are Stanley Cup champs, and I, I personally would rather have Ryan O'Reilly. I think he's going to give you a problem in the summer with when it comes to money because yeah. he likes to, you know, get, get what he can. I, I, I don't blame him for that, but... He's kind of had issues in the past with, uh, what was his first team, Colorado, yeah. I think. He said, no, I'm not going there. He goes to Buffalo. He and, always had problems in Colorado with his contract talks, always. I, I I don't get that. I mean, it worked out for Colorado. I mean, they got their cup and everything. But, man, can you imagine him on that team now? Yeah. He got his, too, Just I the, guess you could say. Yeah, he, with the Blues. Yeah, he got his with the Blues. Yeah, it worked out. It worked out. And the Blues, you know, you know I mean, I'm sorry, Buffalo got that Tage Thompson, who's going to be a future Maybe fifty goal score, so it kind of worked out for everybody. Yeah, no kidding. So we'll we'll see if the the Sabers can get a cup one day, but it's I think it's going to be a while. I I still think the Hawks will do it before Buffalo. You know, <laughs> man, how... I I just don't see I don't see the Blues. You know, it's not like they have like a core that they're trying to build around. Like a lot of guys that they have are are 
are kind of up there, you know. Brandon Saad's, up there. Yeah. Saad's playing, you know, first line left wing, you know. And I'm not saying he's not a first line, first line left winger because that's predominantly what he's played in his career, first, second line left wing. But they don't really have like a core of guys that they can build around. Yeah, I think they're they've taken on a lot of like team, a lot of players that started with other teams and right. they're kind of trying to get their careers back on and stuff like that. But I, you know, they hit Letty, a, a former Stanley Cup champ. You got Ryan O'Reilly's from somewhere else. Uh, the homegrown guys are, you know, what is that? Uh, Colton Perenko, Bennington's a, a, one of those guys. But the rest of them, I feel like they're just kind of like, I don't want to call them like, you know, rejects from other teams, but they, they got to start building from the farm. I mean, I think that Jordan Cairo is a young dude that they got and Vince Dunn, I think they, they just have to, uh, they got, they got to start drafting like kind of like the Hawks are kind of in the mushy middle right now where it's like, we, we were, we're okay, but we're, we're kind of bad too. We got to decide what we want to do yeah. <laughs> because uh, it's getting close to that deadline. So I think they're going to be active though. You know, it, it's who else would you, would you put in the same place as the blues that like teams that are, that were championship caliber, but are maybe sliding down, like kind of like the back stretch, where they're not, say, contending like, like the Lightning are. Well, yeah, I, remember we, I think me and you talked about this yesterday. Actually, we got the we call them the pretenders. Sure, you know we got we got the Rangers that you know they make a lot of noise, and you know their fans are, you know they pretty much plan the parade every every summer. Yeah, and they can't get it done. You got. Kind of like the, the Cowboys of the the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> of the NHL. Yeah, I, you got to get it done sooner or later. You can't keep hyping it up, and you know, like you like the Panthers. Panthers won the President's Trophy. That curse, you know, that it, it's you don't win usually. I think the Blackhawks were the last team to win the President's Cup and win or the President's Trophy and then win the cup. Yeah, it's really hard to do. You almost don't want to win the damn thing. Yeah, and I, I guess we could say the Oilers too. They're um. You know, their window's closed, and they got to, and even the Canes, they, they got to get it done sooner or later. But I got to jump back. I said Vince Dunn, and I, I, I'm i sorry, I meant Thomas, who is the first-line center there. Vince Dunn is on the, the crack, and it just came to me, and I just wanted to get that right. <laughs> okay. But uh, we could go to our final game here. Uh, it happened Sunday night against the Kings, one of the, the most boring hockey games I've ever watched. The Hawks... <laughs> First two periods, I, I, here's the thing. They played the night before, still, so did the Kings. Both teams played the night before. You still got to show up. The Hawks didn't show up for two periods. To me, it's a miracle the Kings won 2-1. to one. I, The Hawks could have easily lost, you know, 7-1, to one and they just couldn't score. Mrazic Mraz played okay. But... Did they have know, two shots after the first period or it was, something like it that? It was, yes. They had two shots. Even... Pat Boyle was ripping the Hawks. He's like, oh, wow, this is another another one of these games where the team doesn't show up. And then the next intermission, oh, well, they still haven't shown up yet. Third period, I guess Ian Mitchell puts one in and kind of gets them close. Uh, they pulled the goalie, and uh, I believe it was Seth Jones actually took a shot from the point. It hit Kopitar. Beautiful block by him. Kind of, hey, I guess you could say he saved it. From, he saved a potential scoring chance. and. um Selkie like guy, he knows how to get it done, and the Kings got the got the win. But very brutal to watch, and it kind of makes me think about this Kings team. Like, if you're having trouble against the Hawks scoring goals like this, you're gonna have a tough time if you're you know going to make a playoff run. Yeah, real tough time. I agree, and especially when we've got some up and up and coming teams like the Kraken. You know, and to be honest with you, the yeah. Kraken are. You know, they, you know, everyone was wondering, is this team going to have a season like Vegas did? You know, their first, their first season, that didn't happen. You know, they had a losing season, but, you know, they're having a bounce back year two. Year two has has been a good year for them. And uh, especially in that Pacific division where, to be honest with you, you know, the competition's not exactly, you know, like it is over on the metropolitan side of the uh, puck on the East Coast. Oh, yeah, it's. Good hockey, man. Yeah. Good hockey. Boston is playing lights out. Yeah. Boston is on fire, making you think like, hey, are they going to do anything at the deadline? Yeah. 
I don't, I don't think it, I wouldn't touch it yeah. unless you got an injury or something. But yeah, you know, there's, there's rumors of Kaner being, you know, scouted by the head of scouting in Boston. He's at the United Center a lot, I'm, I'm told. But I, I honestly, I don't think I'd pull the trigger on it for a rental guy. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wrote an article recently that I released today. What is it today? The 23rd for Blackhawk Cup saying uh, Kaner's not going anywhere. So uh, check that out if you uh, if you want to uh, if you want to read my article. It's on blackhawkup.com. Um, but I don't think that he's going anywhere. I just want to say the Kings. Um, I, I don't think that the Kings. I, I think that they looked better last year, and I don't think that they're a team. Yeah. Um, kind of, you could put them in the same same boat as the Blues as being a team with some potential, but not exactly um, looking to really make any damage come. You know, maybe a wild card, you know, like the that last that last spot for uh, you know the Western Conference or so. Yeah, I, I like the moves they made. You know, they brought in they got Kevin Fiala. Yeah, and they got Victor Arvison the year before Philip Deneau. They, you know what? Just it's weird not seeing Jonathan Quick and Net yeah, <laughs> Dustin is. Brown out there with his smile, yeah. toothless smile, and it's just we're. It's we're getting older. They're getting older too. It's it's sad, but it is. I mean, I I don't think if like they they played pretty tough yesterday. Drew Doughty, he still looks okay, but yeah, I mean, you, you're not gonna. I don't even think they'd beat uh, Edmonton if they run into them in the playoffs. Yeah, I don't think so. They don't have enough yeah. offense. No, and Edmonton. That's I kind of want to jump to some NHL news and uh, kind of want to start off with Zach Hyman. Hold on, hold on, First, hold on. Before we get to that, before we get to that. I gotta let everybody know, man. We've got four NFL teams back, and the two uh, conference championship games are coming up this weekend. Only a few more shots to win big on the playoffs with DraftKings Sportsbook, official sports betting partner of the NFL. Counting down the Super Bowl 57, new customers can bet just five dollars and get 200 in free bets instantly. Not a new customer? You can you can feel free uh, fill the conference championship thrills with stepped up same game parlays. Take your shot at even bigger NFL payout and boost your winnings with each leg you add up to 100%. Now, one game that I am looking forward to, man, is uh, San Francisco. I think that this team has really turned it around. They got um, Jimmy Garoppolo went down. They got this kid, Zach uh, Zach Purdy. uh, I'm sorry, Brock Purdy in there, man. And um, they are... uh, they're, they're a team that that could do it. I'm sick of seeing the Kansas City in there, um, and the Bengals are also a, a team that uh, I'm looking at. I think the, uh, the Bengals are going to are going to win the whole thing, but I think it's going to be Bengals versus um, Bengals versus San Francisco in the Super Bowl. Um, and you know, it's getting to the end of the Super Bowl season. I'm, I'm sorry, that football season, which means when that happens. You know we're 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 getting close to playoff hockey, which is a good time. So um, do us a favor: download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code Shy Tomahawk. New customers can bet five dollars on the conference championships and get two hundred in free bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code Shy Tomahawk. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See the show notes for details. And our friends at Manscaped want to wish everybody a happy New Year. Uh, the ball is officially dropped, but that doesn't mean you have to drop the ball on your on your balls in 2023. Whether you had a New Year's kiss or not, the leaders and below the waist grooming have cu- have you covered for your much needed resolution of bringing sexy back. Join the seven million men worldwide who trust Manscaped for with our excellent offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code Tomahawk20 for 20% off and free shipping. Me and Matt use their stuff. We use the buff bundle. It is like a loofah type of replacement, which I like. The shampoo and the body wash is incredible. Look for the Buff Bundle. Um, it's uh, It smells great. My wife loves it. And uh, use our code to save some money. Now, back to the podcast. Let's talk about Zach Hyman, Matt. Yeah, so Zach Hyman, first star of the week, man. 24 goals, 32 assists. 56 points, solid season. I think he's a plus 14. Kenny Holland took a lot of heat for signing this guy. Yeah, he did. And you know what, dude? He's got more points than Austin Matthews right now. <laughs> so I looked that up because he was a former Leaf. You know, they they didn't know if they were going to keep him. But, 
You know what? I it, that's a great fit for him. He's playing on a really good team with two of the best players in the world. He's going to have career high in points. So I, 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 I found it interesting, man. I couldn't believe, like, I saw, I'm like, Zach Hyman, the guy, the probably a second line dude, but he's tearing it up right now. He's getting, he's getting a lot of love up there in Edmonton, but, uh, yeah, there's a goalie controversy too up there now. Cause that, uh, Skinner is kind of, he took the net over from Jack Campbell. So, you know, Edmonton's thing was always getting a goalie, and they got two pretty solid ones now. So what are they it could do? be interesting in the playoffs, man. It could be really interesting. Um, I'll tell you what, Jack Campbell was uh, really good last year. What do you think they're going to do? Oh, I think they're going to get past the first round. I, I, I think that's a given for them. I mean, they made it to the final, I believe, the Western Finals. Yeah. Was it last year or a couple of years ago? Last I think year, they got close. mad at them, though. Yeah, by the Avalanche, they they need to they got to get they got to get some assets at the deadline. There's going to be, you know, I I could even see them calling the Blues, getting that you know a center that could shut down like say a McKinnon and Rantanen and try to slow down Kale McCarr at least the best you can. A good defenseman, a good stay at home defenseman, even a good you know like I said a Ryan O'Reilly like center to. Make it harder for him. He's got the experience, so that that's something to think about, you know. But I think they they can make some noise. They, they, I think Connor McDavid is playing in a different world as usual. He's just a freak, but he's hungry, man. His window is closing. Do you think he's gonna end up staying in Edmonton? If they lose, no. This year, within like the next two years, I would say. Yeah, that window is almost shut. Yeah. So what? Yeah. What about Drysaddle? Is he going to want to stick around? Because he's got a good contract coming up in about a year, doesn't he? That's a great hit, too. $8 million. He, I mean, if he wants to get paid, somebody's going to pay. They're going to overpay. But um, I think him and McDavid have formed a pretty good bond, you know, kind of like yeah. a Kane and Taves-like bond. Absolutely. I think I'd, I think I'd be like, hey, Connor, are you, I want to sign a four-year deal, six-year deal. I'm not going to sign it unless I know you're going to sign it. You know what I mean? I, you, you know, guys talk like that. I'm sure Kane and Taves went, went through that when they were going through the resigning processes and stuff. So that's, that's what I would do if I was uh, Leon Dreisaitl. You know, it was kind of funny because, you know, Kaner had some, you know, off-ice issues for a while. And, um, you know, K- Taves was kind of the, you know... Um, you know, lace the curtain, good kid. <laughs> lace curtain of the two, you know, yeah. and uh, that's what, probably why they got matching, you know, matching a contract, you know, with with McDavid and and Drysaddle. I don't think that that would be the case, man. No, different agents. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think McDavid should be the highest paid player in the game. And he's yeah, just, he should. Ev- he's going to be a Hart Trophy winner probably for the next seven years. The way he's playing, he doesn't look like he's going to slow down at all. So he deserves to get paid more, but Leon deserves to get paid a lot more too. And he's at eight million. Eight million he definitely should be. He should be paid more than Austin Matthews. So that, that's going to put him more than uh, Connor McDavid. Matthew, Matthews is going to want fifteen million. Well, he's at thirteen now, right? Right, thirteen five or something. Which is, you know, he scored sixty. He he's deserving of it, but you just you got. AHL players on the bottom six and backup goalies. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be very hard to, you know, win a playoff series, especially with depth like that. You you got a lot of money tied up. <laughs> John Tavares, who he's a good player. Uh, Mitch Marner is the leading goal scorer right now. I think he's got fifty six points. I think he's the only one. Zach Hyman. He's tied with Zach Hyman, <laughs> and Zach Hyman is not, not even the. He's like the third leading goal scorer on the Oilers. So it, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting when Matthews, his deal's up and Marner's deal's up, Dry Seidel and McDavid. Maybe we'll see a little uh, uh, carousel and we might see some guys jump teams and stuff. But uh, I, I think McDavid will stay. I think they're going to do anything they can to keep him there. But they got to win one for him, though. Yeah, I think that they want to keep him, but they, they like, 
do you think that he's going to be one of those guys who wants more of a say in the team on how they make up the team? Well, yeah, I'm sure he's got a say in that. You know, I'm I'm sure he had a say in even you know hiring a new GM. I think that when they found out Kenny Holland was coming in, I I bet you Connor McDavid was thrilled about it. And the guy, he's got a lot of cup success with Detroit, playoff success, and. He is trying, you know, he's he's bringing in players, he's moving guys around, he he's, he took a chance on Evander Kane, and Evander Kane's a good hockey player. Yeah, he he's, is. He's a douchebag off the ice, yeah. but he's a very good hockey player, and it, it's been working out there. He's Big one of the best forwards there, he's just he's just coming back now, he's, he's healthy. So he could be a little spark plug that, you know, Edmonton needs, but I still think they should make, even if it's a Jonathan Taves-like thing. You know, get a guy who could, when who's face-offs? ready to go in the playoffs. You, you've seen what he could do, and in, in if he wanted him to be a shutdown guy, he, him and Kessler, you know, they canceled each other out that series, and the rest of the, you know, the Hawks just had more depth, and they wasted time shutting each other down and opened up other scoring guys, and Edmonton might need something like that. Like, it, like jumping back to Ryan O'Reilly, Selkie guy. I mean, that, I think that's what they're missing. What about defense? Say Toronto, for instance. Say you, you know, you lose Tavares. Is is Tavares such a big piece of the puzzle there that with him they win, without him they lose? I don't think he's as important as they hype him to be. I mean, he he got hurt last year, and they were saying, "Oh, Tavares got hurt. We're we're, we're done," and they they kind of quit. That might have been two years ago. Either way. I don't think he's in, as in, as important as Marner and Matthews, obviously, but they should, like, going back to Jake McCabe, I think Jake McCabe would be a good fit for that Maple Leaf team. Just a, a guy who, physical, does his job, you know, he could you could put him with anybody, he'll, he'll do his job, he'll block shots, stuff like that, he's tough. You need that in the playoffs, and I'd like to see Jake get a chance, actually. Because he's like he said, he's been playing in the NHL for a while now, and he's he's been losing a long time. I'd like to see him go to a winner, but I don't want him to play for a week in Toronto because yeah. I don't think they're going to get out of the first round if they're running into Tampa. I watched Tampa the other night; they look dynamite. We got a little shout out to Steven Stamkos; he got his 500th goal. It's unbelievable! That can you imagine how many goals he'd have if he wasn't? You know, he's been hurt. Probably a good three years he's been fighting injuries, and yeah. I, he's probably be at 600 by now. I agree. Very underrated goal scorer. What about Vancouver? So, yeah, I was just going to ask you, so have you been following this Vancouver drama going on? I was kind of surprised that Bruce, Bruce uh, Boudreaux let go. Yeah, it's just the way they did it. It was a little interesting. They He had a press conference, uh, Rutherford, the president of the club, says, yeah, he's probably not our guy. <laughs> <laughs> while, he, while he was still a coach, and it, Bruce was, he didn't know, and he was very emotional during the game, he was like, this might be my last day here, and he had tears in his eyes, I like Bruce, I think, quite honestly, I think he's a better analyst mm. than he is a coach, he was a very good coach, don't get me wrong, but I like him, I, I, I heard him on XM Radio a lot, and he's on NHL Network and stuff, I, I loved him, just straightforward, very knowledgeable, liked him, but what they did to him now, that was pretty shitty. Yeah, I it thought. is. And, and it's like, hey, yeah, we're, we're hiring uh, Rick Tockett. See you, Bruce. Move over. It's like, well, don't forget, Vancouver was terrible last year. And they signed him, and Bruce got him to 500, which is a miracle. He got him playing right. I think he won his first six, seven games or something. Seven games in a row. They were chanting, Bruce, there it is. And he was like a, a stud in Vancouver. And then they... The fans still like him. It's just the the management. They, you know what they said. It's not working out, and they kind of did it in a different way. And I know the hockey, the hockey Twitter world is just uh, torching the Vancouver Canucks uh, head office. And well, I I've never been a fan of the whole the whole club. Actually, I, I don't like the team. I don't like the city. You know, I, the, the rivalry just was great back in the day with the Hawks, and there was just a lot of hate there from me, but. <laughs> I think that was a shitty move by them, and you know what? You don't want to see a guy get let go like that, you know? Yeah. Take him in the office and say, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna let you go after this game, and we're gonna bring a new face in to try to change it up." Don't 
don't make it into a circus like they did. Sounds more of like something that Vegas would do. But yeah, and I think Toronto did that, or I don't know, sorry, uh, Florida did that to Gerard Gallant a couple of years ago. They fired him like on the away game. He, he's like, I don't have a ride home. <laughs> you know, he's like, wow. he fired me right after the game or something. So they, they could have handled it better. And I, th- I think they did apologize, but you know, it, apologizing when it's too late, it's just like, okay, you know, you're just trying to cover your butts now and everything, but you know, the damage has been done. So they interviewed Bruce. He was very classy. He goes, he loved his time there and he hopes one day he can get another shot at coaching. But honestly, man, I don't know. I don't know with him. He's kind of getting up there in age. Yeah. So. I think, like I said, I think he's really good on TV. There, there's a joke going on. He should take Rick Tockett's spot on TNT on, on the the Charles Barkley side. You know, that'd be funny be the, if he did. The, that'd be hilarious. And you know what, dude? He would be really good on it, Bruce. He'd be very good on that show. But uh, jumping to some more news. Uh, so Cole Caulfield is out for the year. Yeah, I shoulder saw that. surgery. So what does that mean for the Hawks? So this, their studs out. Are they going to finish below us now? Do you think it's going to be like <laughs> let your tanking games begin? Yeah, I think that's what's thing? going on in the NHL. To be honest with you, I mean, if you're not going to win, and this is your your sniper, your stud sniper, get them healthy. I mean, have them ready for camp next year. You know, don't don't play to the end of the season, then get surgery, and then miss you know the first two months of the season. Right, it's kind of dumb. So I think they're doing the right thing, shutting them down. Yeah, why not? I, mean, I don't see anything wrong with that. They're, they're, not con- you know, they're not contending for a cup. No, no. And I, I saw your post this morning about Kirby Doc <laughs> with uh, one of the, the cool guys, uh, I think, what, Puck and Ho- Hostile? Yeah, Puck and Hostile. Yeah, I like goes, that guy. You guys aren't, yeah, you, you guys are, you guys in uh, uh, Montreal aren't doing a victory lap now, are you? He, he's got like, what, 30 points only? Kirby Doc and. They like to rub it in saying, oh, yeah, the, we won that trade. We fleeced you on that trade. No, uh-huh. no, no I, don't, I don't think so. Not at all. We'll see. <laughs> and you paid the kid $4 million. Yeah, which is you paid him more insane. money. Uh, we, we got Frank yeah. Nazar. Uh, he's not. Uh, actually, we got Frank Nazar and a, a 66th pick. So we'll see how that, that plays out. But, uh, you know, Nazar is still developing. And we had a player that wouldn't be doing any better here if he was with the Hawks. He wouldn't be producing no. anymore. Probably be playing probably the same role. You probably know? be injured. Yeah. Could be, yeah. I think he's got 26 points on the season or something like that. Um, yeah. You yeah. know what I noticed about him? They put him out on overtime when there's more open ice, and he's really good. Yeah, he is. And with open ice. Open ice and he's getting overtime points. I I'm very curious to see how many overtime points he has because I bet you it's about ten comparative so, to uh, like five on five. Yeah, I guarantee you his five on five numbers are probably maybe fifteen points, and he's got his overtime points at like ten ish. Mm. I could see that because I I watch a lot of highlights and stuff, and he's on the ice. He's creative. That for four, or I'm sorry, three on three. I said four on four. What is this? The nineties, but <laughs> he. Definitely three on three. He's very good. He's smart. He's creative playmaker. He is, but when it's five on five, he's a ghost. So he's got to improve his game a little bit more. I think he should get a little bit bigger and, you know, start learning the East Coast game or the East West game, not North South forward, you know, try to shove it down their throat. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes you got to skate, you know, like Patrick Kane, skate below the circles. He got nothing, turn around. Hit your uh, hit your point man coming in for a shot, something like that. Mm-hmm. I just feel like he is just up. Oh, I don't got anything. I'm gonna drive or turn it over or just dump it. I like to see him get more creative, like he is, and you know, like overtime. Sure. So Johnny Hockey man, he's returning to Calgary tonight. W- what do you think he's gonna get? Is he gonna get cheers or is he gonna get a John Tavares like greetings from the Islanders after he signed with the? Toronto Maple Leafs. I think there's going to be some people that are going to give him some love, but um, I don't know, man. You know, he spent a lot of time there. He did a lot there. And, um, you know, you can also say, you know, Calgary kind of wasted his time in a way. But uh, I think yeah. that I think that the, the crowd will accept him. Yeah, I think it's going to be like 50-50. You know, he, he was like their cane 
And I feel like Kachuk did it right for him by saying, you know, I'm I'm not going to resign. Trade me. Get assets for me. I don't want to screw you guys over. And Johnny Hockey kind of had him going till about, you know, pretty much free agency day. And, you know, he kind of shocked the hockey world and signed with the Blue Jackets. I'm, I'm not sure why, but... His excuse was he wanted to be closer to home, I guess. And In New Jersey. <laughs> may, maybe he thought it would be cool to pay, play with Patrick Laine. I honestly thought Patrick Laine would be tearing it up this year with him. You don't hear too much about him. He's kind of had some injury issues, yeah. but they're kind of hoping that this kid, you know, starts getting back to his 40-goal, 50-goal season-type plateau, and Johnny Hockey's probably the guy that can do it. Maybe a couple of years, I think. You know, I could see the Columbus Blue Jackets making some noise. They're a little bit ahead of the Hawks, I think, maybe by like a year or two. But uh, yeah, I, I think the the crowd will it's fifty fifty. There's going to be some better people. I'm I'm sure uh, the Mitts and Twig boys or Tyler, he's probably going to be happy because he loved Johnny Hockey. But I I remember he he said he this was a rough summer for him. <laughs> he lost Kachuk. You know, you lose Johnny Hockey, but you know you got Johnny Huberdeau, who's a good player. Kadri, who's kind of turning into a fan favorite wherever he goes, but he's still public enemy number one when he's not on your team type of guy. Like a Marshawn. So, turning into a Marshawn. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? I saw a thing on Brad Marchand. Somebody said that this guy has the personality to be like the face of hockey. They they like him. He's He'll tell it like it is. He's a smart ass and... Like, you know, like the new world type of thing, the mentality, oh, no, he's not nice, he's mean, and, you know, this Trevor Zegers is our guy, but a lot of people were saying, no, nah, no, nah, we like Marchant, we like the old school guy, the little ball of hate type of thing, and <laughs> I, I kind of I kind of agree, man, I, I, Trevor Zegers is good and everything, but I just don't like his arrogance, like him yeah. saying... Well, he's a skilled guy. He shouldn't be touched like that. No, well, yeah, you should. It's, it's it's hockey. Just because you're 130 pounds and you like doing Michigan goals and guys are going to hit you for that, I mean, it, it doesn't make you untouchable. I, I like, at least Marchant, you know, he'll, he'll back it up. He'll, he'll drop the gloves with you. He's gritty. Uh, but yeah, I'm not, I don't know about you, man. I'm not really a big, uh, big Zegris guy. I'm not either. Could you imagine yeah. Zegris playing in the playoffs? What he would be saying? Oh, yeah, a different game. He's like, oh, this is too hard. I'm going to just... Uh, I'm going to go back and play NHL 23. <laughs> it's, almost like, it's almost like Jack Hughes. I mean, he he's a little guy too, but he's having a really, really good season. He hasn't complained about being hit, though. Yeah, I, well, and he's he's a little guy. He, he I remember when they first drafted him, what was he, like 5'8", 5'9"? Yeah, five, he, nine? he seemed pretty small. Zegers is maybe a little taller, but, dude, he's a bone. Yeah, he I'm not is. saying he's like Ryan Miller like guy, but <laughs> he's a bone out there, and this guy's got to beef up. And he, I don't know about his numbers this year. I just don't. I just don't see the hype. I hate the Michigan crap. I do. I do too. I, I, I mean, it, it's cool. It's cool to see, but in a way, Torts is right, man. He goes, you see these guys, these kids now at practice. That's all they're working on and stuff, and that's not hockey. Oh, really? I mean. Tort said that last year on ESPN, he took a lot of heat for that. And, you know, Tort doesn't give a shit because yeah. he doesn't care. He, he, but he's right. I think he's right because when I'm watching videos and stuff, I see these kids doing this Michigan stuff. But then you'll see like a kid, you know, line up a kid for doing it. He'll just boom, hit him while he's doing it. And then the kid's down. Oh, it was dirty. It was a dirty hit. He was just trying to do the Michigan. No, no, you're, you're not supposed to be doing that. And, yeah, I just think goalies, they, they even play it wrong. You see a Michigan, it's like they freeze up and they just give it up right away. Yeah. So I, I, I hate it, man. I'm not a fan of it. Just because probably because I was a goalie and they're just getting lit up by it. But they got to figure it out, man. They got to stop letting this happen. Dude, I saw um in a, in a women's league, uh, this chick, she did it on the fly. <laughs> That's it, impressive. It was really yeah. impressive. She just like kind of like bent down. She was going around. Uh, behind the net she kind of she just bent up and, and put it in the net dude it was so fast um was this the world cup it might have been world juniors yeah it might have yeah, been she was 14 years old yeah i saw that it was 14 really years quick. old i was like whoa i'm not saying that i mean it's impressive when you can you got you're incredibly skilled to be able to do that during a game but 
if that's all you can do, I mean, that's that's not a good thing because people are going to they're going to catch on to that and they're going to be like, OK, there's Zegers going behind the net. Hit him. So I'm going to I'm going to stay on this post and I'm going to just get ready to lay him out. And I mean, it's fair game to me. I mean, I I you got to play tough on the guy. 47 goal, uh, 47 games played, 17 goals, 23 assists. It's not really impressive, man. No, it's not bad. Not bad for him. I mean, they don't really have much. They're they're tanking for Bedard too. Like I think <laughs> Zegers is more of a more of a playmaker. Yeah, he is. You know, than a sniper. But I think Bedard. Actually, I had NHL Network on the other day, and the main question was, if Bedard gets drafted by the Blackhawks, uh, Ducks, or Canadians, will he score over thirty goals? And every caller said no really yeah they said no and one caller actually from chicago said i think if the hawks draft him he will get 25 goals and maybe 40 assists and i was like damn it's kind of low this this guy's you know lighting it up in the southern league and everything but i found it interesting but one caller said if he's playing with zegris he's going to get 30 for sure and I was like, what What am I missing here? What, he's going to Michigan pass to him all the time? <laughs> you know, so I don't know. What's your take on that? Do you think he'll get over 30 Absolutely. drafted by one of those teams? Yeah. Um, if, he, if he's playing for the Blackhawks and he's playing with Patrick Kane, uh, Kane will set that kid up all day long, especially if Bedard, if he's a shooter and wants to shoot, Kane, I mean, look, look at what he's done with Dabrinkit. Dabrinkit's a multi-40 yeah. goal scorer. I mean, you know, let me take a look. What, let me look at uh, Dabrinkit's stats this year. Definitely doesn't have the goals like he does. No. He, he's got the assists, I know. Yeah. But like he's you said, a winger. Yeah, Kaner. He's a winger yeah. and he's a shooter. He's got 15 goals this year. Yeah, you know? That's, that's way down for him right now. Yeah. Way down. Yeah. And uh, he's a yeah. minus 18, 24 assists. Oh. Um, looking at his past stats, he usually scores more goals than he assists. And yes, this year he's definitely got, the sh- trigger man. Yep. Yeah. And this year he's got more assisting goals. So, you know, things have, have uh, kind of changed for him. Obviously he's not playing with Patrick Kane. So um, he's not resigning. He's not going to stay. Yeah. I don't think he will. I, I don't think it's working out for him. No. So, um, so yeah, I think Patrick Kane still has it. Could you imagine Bedard playing even with a guy like, um, like uh, Lucas Reichel? You know, yeah, Lucas, Korczynski. Lucas Reichel, Korczynski firing a puck up to him would be great too. You know, Lucas Reichel can play at the NHL level. The game has slowed down for him, I think, uh, tremendously, uh, because he, I don't think he could really keep up and 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 really um, grasp what was happening um, last year. This year, um, he's a guy kind of imposing his will a little bit. You know, he's skating with the puck really well. He had two defenders on him. Uh, passed in between someone's legs and set up Kershaw for his easiest goal of his career. Yeah. So yep. if he can do that, you know Bedard can get open for that. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Lucas so, Reichel would definitely compliment Bedard. D- definitely. So Ducks, uh, Blackhawks, I agree with the Z- about Zegers being a playmaker. Uh, I think that Bedard could score 30 goals for either or p- more for the Blackhawks. And um, I I think that I would probably agree with your assessment with the 25 goals, maybe even 50 assists with the uh, with Montreal. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, he's got yeah he's got Cole Caulfield, another sniper, and he's also yeah. got you know believe it or not, you know Kirby Doc could also benefit from that too. Oh, he'd be happy as hell. You mean he's not going to be putting up 30 points every year? He's probably going to double his points too. Yeah, like the Max Domi thing. Probably Max move to Domi wing playing with Kaner. Yeah, move to wing because I don't I don't know what his faceoff stats are this year. I can look that up, but I would imagine that they're not very well. Kirby. Yeah, Doc. I think it's going to be one of those three teams, man. And even throw the the Jackets in there. Obviously, the Coyotes have to be in it, but oh man, that would just be an absolute waste if it were to happen. I'd be so upset by it. Yeah, I um, you know what I really liked about Kirby Doc was his size. Yeah, he. Definitely a solid skater. I think especially he, for his size. He, just to maybe bulk up a little bit. I feel like he got bumped off pucks easy. And uh remember Rad Kogudis totally just annihilated him. Oh yeah. That flip. And you know, Kale McCarr made him look stupid, but Kale McCarr does that to, you know, everybody. Oh yeah. So 
So, hey, we got the All-Star game coming up. Yeah, he's got a 38.3% win percentage at the face-off dot, so that's not, Kirby? Yeah. No, that's nothing special. No. So, hey, what do you think about those All-Star jerseys? Um, <laughs> nice, the logos, yes. Nice retro um, yes. callback. Um, I still like the original purple and, uh, and black ones better. But yeah. uh, I think it's cool. You know, obviously they're trying to maybe trying to appease the, you know, the older fans, not the older fans, but us, maybe our, you know, our, our age. The 90s kids. Yeah. yeah. Trying to, you know, yeah. with the, with them. I like them. I think the, I, the pink and the white one. one's pretty cool. Do you? I have the one, the West with the Hawk logo on the side, uh-huh. Tony Amani. Okay. I actually won it in a raffle and... I'm not sure where it's at. I think my dad might have it, oh but it's gosh. sweet, man. It, it's so cool. I love that retro uh, West NHL West. Yeah, man. and I like the East too. Yeah, you know what? I look good. You know what I like the most when they switched it when they went North America versus the world. I thought that was cool. They yeah. should do that every other year. I think that'd be pretty interesting. Yeah, Canada versus everyone else. <laughs> Well, yeah, North USA and Canada versus the world. No, I'm just joking, just saying Canada versus everybody else. (laughs) Canada versus the rest of the world, yeah. (laughs) The United Nations take on Canada, yeah. I mean, that'd be pretty cool. You look at the rosters, though, man. If you're, I, I, there was a a post a couple weeks ago. Dude, the Americans have a deep team. Mm -hmm. Like, there's some, I think there's some better American talent than Canadian talent. And the goaltending is definitely better. Yeah. Goaltending is dying in Canada. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, being no kidding. Taken over by Russians. And there's some good American goalies too, but Canada's got to figure out their goaltending situation. Yeah. Especially with the, you know, Olympics coming up in like, what, three years? Well, they had Carter Hart. <laughs> he was supposed to be their guy. Won. And, you know, you look at USA, you got some good American goalies. You got Connor Hellebuck is good. You know, I think Jordan Bennington was on the roster for Canada too, and he's fallen so hard, man. I don't know what's going on with that guy. Yeah, but you know, you got even Jack Campbell's American. He's you know, you got Jake Ottinger, a good American goalie, uh, Spencer Knight down in Florida, <laughs> and then you got obviously the Russians. You got uh, Sorokin, you got uh, Vasilevsky. Yep. You got Igor Shesterkin. There's some damn good goalies out there. And you know what? You don't see too many Canadians. So hopefully they can figure out. In, in, I, I would love to see Austin Matthews and Kaner play together. I think that would be awesome. You can throw Johnny Hockey on the other side. Yeah. That'd be a hell of a line. Kaner would have uh, two targets there. Oh, man. And Even Dabrinkit and, and Matthews. Yeah. Dabrinkit, you got Dylan Larkin. You got some really good American kids coming up, man exciting i think russia is going to be the powerhouse though yeah quite honestly they they they're just stacked with talent yeah i agree i agree well cool man that was a good podcast i want to thank everybody for listening thank you very very much um do us a favor give us a follow on twitter twitter message us on twitter if you want to um want us to you know feature anything on the podcast and thank you everyone for listening this is the tomahawk and we're out of here